Coming up in part one of our trip, we show you how to camp for a week in the wilderness without any water. We stare at our reflections. I wear a hat. Rob listens to his reel, and I impart some words of wisdom. The good news is the eggs are still rattling. It means they're not all broken. So thanks for watching and follow along on our September 2021 trip to the Boundary Waters. Our adventure starts weeks before in Omaha, Nebraska, with Heath at Solvers, where Rob is designing, or planning, or I'll just let Rob's arm tell us. Hey everybody, today I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm with Heath, who is with uh, Solvers. He does welding and fabrication. Um, today we're working on putting a canoe rack together on the 2020 Dodge Grand Caravan, uh, so that we're taking our uh, trip from Omaha up to the Boundary Waters. Uh, we don't necessarily have to rely on the roof rack that comes with the vehicle and it gives a little more stability and a little more control. So we're just going to talk about the design and uh, try to brainstorm the best way to come up with this. And then as far as options on that, that extension. Well, with that sorted out and giving Rob a few pointers on how to frame video shots, it was time to get packing. All right. So here it is, a little after one o'clock in the morning. We have been prepping and packing and getting things ready to go. And it just seems to be kind of one thing after another. We're trying to get out of here at five o'clock in the morning. We still don't have the van back from the <laughs> fabricator or any bags back. Yeah, or any bags back. As you can see, they're still hanging on the wall. Uh, this trip is going to be uh, Ben and I and uh, four of our friends. You guys will get a chance to meet them uh, here shortly. But uh, as of right now, we just wanted to uh, check in with you. And we're gonna get back to trying to get packed up and ready to go before it's uh, sunlight. As you can see, packing takes a lot of time when you have to plan out a week's worth of food, clothes, camping supplies, fishing gear, and video equipment. We would go through everyone's gear later and pack it appropriately once we got to Ely, but for now, we needed to load up the van and get going. We hit the road and made one important stop along the way. So we just got uh, done getting the leeches over at Bados here in uh, north side of Minneapolis. Uh, temperatures up north uh, aren't producing leeches, so we're going to take these up with us. There are a small, but fish will still eat them. We arrived in the quaint town of Ely, Minnesota before sundown and drove to Canoe Country Outfitters where we had rented a house so we would have enough room to lay out all of our gear. We stopped in at the Outfitters and heard there were supposed to be storms headed our direction around when we were planning on paddling in. We were able to get new permits so we could go in a day earlier, which would hopefully allow us to have camp set up before the rain came. However, going in early also meant that rather than having an entire day to prepare for new guys for the trip, we only had about three hours. For the start of day one, we woke up early so we could be at the Outfitters when they opened, with the hope of beating the incoming weather. They helped everyone get fitted with paddles and safety gear, and we loaded everything up and made the last pit stop at our favorite tackle shop. We've had success before with leeches, but with the change in water temperature later in the season, we also got some minnows in case the fish were picky. The guys there gave us the latest fishing report and told us to start with the minnows either on an eighth or a quarter ounce bright jig head. Keep in mind, minnows add a lot of weight and bulk to carry in, so plan ahead with an extra pack if you want to bring them. The weather front that was bringing the storms seemed to have already arrived. The wind was howling and looking to make our paddle in very interesting. 
It didn't sound like the wind was going to slow until after the storms rolled through, so we figured better now than later. And why does it always seem that no matter where you go or what direction you turn, it's always a headwind? Like how a whitewater kayaker picks a line down a set of rapids, we tried to read the water and pick a route that would give us the most cover and the fewest crosswind situations. Rob and I were genuinely concerned with our friends paddling in these conditions. If a canoe started taking on water or tipped over, we may never see our gear again. To ensure this didn't happen, we took a couple of short breaks to recharge and see how everyone was holding up. It really was a grueling paddle, and at times you could see the, why are we doing this again? look on people's faces, but they proved that while they may not take the most direct path between two points, there was no reason for us to worry about our gear. Not only were these guys getting it and starting to come together, they were actually having fun. Sometimes our world it seems so busy We can't see the shining sun We step outside to see the light Morning air, our journey's just begun. It feels so right. Let's stay the night. A simple sky in stillness, the million stars above. Even though we live in, we just can't get enough. Memories we we'll build them. Tell me what you're thinking of. Even though we live in, we just can't get enough. The sun has turned to gold Get the canoe, those fish are ours All the story still untold, things left undone yeah. It's never easy, and that's okay Cause portage mules, they always go away Alright you guys, so this is our first portage Everybody's made one trip over Pretty sure the newbies are dying right now, but we're gonna see if they can make it for the next board, which is in about 10 minutes from now. So we are just leaving Lake One, gonna jump into Lake Two. Not making good time, look at my watch, don't even have one. But uh, we'll see if uh, Brian, Dave, Brad, and uh, here they come right now. Don't wanna know that I'm talking about them. But anyway, talk to you soon. Take a breather. A simple sky in stillness, the million stars above. Even though we live in, we just can't get enough. So we just finished first portage of the day. A whopping 29 yards or rods. And uh, feels good. Uh, I think these guys here. So we got Farley over here and Farley over here. That's Team Zigzag. Then we got Dave and Dustin, and that's uh, Crash Course. Memories we build them. Tell me what you think of. Though we live in, we just can't get enough. And this road behind us seems so clear. If the light goes, we could watch the morning sun. Million stars above, even though we live in, we just can't get enough. Memories we we'll build up, tell me what you're thinking of. Even though we live in, we just can't get enough. Hey, you guys, it is uh, just before midnight, day one night. We came in one day early because there was supposed to be some pretty bad weather. Not even sure if you can hear us right now. The winds are just really kicking up and uh, some bad weather is going to be coming in. Um, we've just been notified that there's potentially 70 mile an hour winds. Half hail. Dollar size. Yeah, <laughs> hail. Um, oh, uh, cloud to ground lightning. Um, 
it's floods. a uh, yeah floods so it's a uh, particularly dangerous situation potentially we tried to batten down the hatches here uh, lowered some things so that hopefully the winds will go over them and not tear them apart but I guess at this point uh, we just wanted to check in before we ended the night and hunker down in the tents see and, what it looks like in the morning yeah we'll <laughs> let you know if we made it through or not All right, day two here at Lake Three. While we were expecting to wake up on Gilligan's Island, we, uh, we woke up to a pretty decent sunrise. We were hearing from every major weather station that we were gonna be expecting severe thunderstorm and hail, and here we are. Getting ready to start fishing. And the best news is, we already caught the first keeper, Smalley. So, let me show you a few of the things we did around the campsite that uh, ended up not needing to do. We collapsed the tarps, brought our canoes all the way back into the woods and flipped them over. Strung most of our miscellaneous gear together, so if it went, it all went. We used our anchors, which are basketball hoops, to secure our minnows, wrap them up, put some rocks in them, toss them out in the lake about 15 feet. Most of them survived and might have saved the trip. So right now, uh, those guys are out on the point since we're landlocked here for a while, uh, just kind of hanging out. So we want to show you guys the new boat. Uh, it is a North Star Northwind 20. It's actually a four person canoe that uh, has two removable seats. Obviously we're taking those out so we can carry all the gear and things like that. But just kind of wanted to introduce you to it. Um, we're also going to get into some of the little modifications that we've made to it so that we can uh, have our fishing poles and our fish finder uh, attached to it. It's Kevlar, it's lightweight, one person can pick it up, portage with it, uh, makes for a great boat. As you heard Ben say earlier, we were supposed to have this big storm last night. We're supposed to still get a storm yet today. As you can see, the water is pretty, uh, pretty choppy. We're not going to be able to get out in a canoe to do anything uh, productive fishing-wise. So we're stuck here on shore for a little bit, hoping that the winds die down, that we can get out there and uh, get some walleyes. With more storms on the horizon, we took a break from fishing to complete some crucial tasks around camp to prepare for the incoming weather. Well, most of us anyways. And then the rain came back, interrupting Rob's nap and forcing us all back underneath the tarp. All right, started day three today. Yesterday was pretty much a washout. Got the fish early in the morning and a couple smallies, that was about it, some northerns. And the rest of the day was spent under the tarp, all around, waiting for the thunderstorms to move through. Today I woke up, giant fireball in the sky. It is not coming towards us. Yeah, thank goodness. Not today anyway. That would be the next thing on the list. Yep. But uh, you did write a list, walleye today. Walleye. Uh, cook walleye. Yep. And then eat walleye. Yep. So, this is kind of That's the start what, of the trip. Yeah. The unofficial start, day three. Yeah, day three, start of the trip. Bacon, eggs, pancakes, steak, mint chocolate chips in your pancakes if you like those. And we found out our tent floats. Oh. Oh. So can somebody tell me why? They don't make a tent with a bottom on it that doesn't let water in, but yet they'll sell us a tent all day where when water gets in, it'll never go out. If you know something, let us know. So a little something I guess I'll share with you guys, a little, little secret uh, or a little tip that will give you a pro tip, I guess. 
So we bring a uh, silky saw along and these 15 inch uh, loppers. I like these because a lot of this, this wood that floats around on the sides and stuff, you can just pick it up and you can cut it down to the size you want. And it's a lot easier than sawing it. So next time you go out, give it a try, pick yourself up a, a lopper. been an adventure um, not what I pictured or imagined but we had uh, we had very good weather day one day two rain lots of rain and now it's a little chilly and um, the lake is calm so this is this is exciting this is the stillness that I was expecting uh, in my head coming out here and just seeing it calm and still and uh, little chilly that's all right so very excited about today we have to work for our food which um, which is exciting and, and we're constantly working you know it's um, done a lot of camping trips but you know it's constant work getting getting wood and preparing the next meal um, and it starts right away so I, I enjoy that though very excited hey so today I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about uh, what we do as far as accessorizing our canoe um, I built a uh, African teak thwart uh, so that we could mount some of the gear that we use. Um, I also put on a uh, tape measure so that as we catch fish we can measure and make sure that we're uh, compliant with the rules and regulations. We're using the Garmin Striker 4. Uh, we're powering it with the Nakwa um, self-contained battery. We seem to get about 30 hours of runtime off of this battery in one charge. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you today how we are going to set up this new thwart system that we have employed. And uh, some of the accessories here I've kind of modified, but this is a Scotty uh, transducer arm that I picked up so I also had this bag uh, picked it up off of Amazon but then I took it down to my local tailor and asked him to sew a couple of straps on it so that I could attach it to the thwart once it was ready to go so you'll be able to see that I've got the power and the uh, batteries and all that stuff kind of self-contained. What I like to do is just hang it from the thwart. Just kind of like this here. And then that way everything stays self-contained. I don't have wires all over the place. And all I have to do then is just connect my wires in the back. Go ahead and just test it real quick. So we've got power and we're set up here. Next thing is just getting the transducer put on. And that's pretty easy as long as you don't lose the parts. When we're paddling we like to keep it up like this just in case we run into rocks. Real simple though. Just lower it down to the side and retighten this here and you're good to go you're ready to start fishing with it being on this ram mount you can you can move it closer to you you can adjust it this in this fashion so that way when you're sitting here in your seat you've got everything right at your fingertips uh, a couple other things you see I put my rod holder on here um, I do have another camera mount that I can put up here um, which I haven't accessorized yet, but I do have is a cup holder for my drink. Okay. 
catch fish like this. Don't put lead in your mouth, kids. So today we're using slip bobbers and minnows. At least we're trying to use slip bobbers and minnows. Can't seem to get in the water quite yet. We are officially in the water. After two days of sitting under the tarp, we couldn't wait to get out in the canoes. We really wanted to get some fishing on film, so I did my best to pump Rob up with words of encouragement and positive affirmations. Great cast. Thanks. I like to catch fish. It's been slow going. So Ben has just hooked up on his first fish of the day. What is it? Oh. All right, we got we got the first first walleye of the day. Just reeled it in. Uh, we all think. It's a keeper. I'll tell you. So you're saying there's walleye in here. That minnow just saw its life flash before it died. <laughs> <laughs> Desperately needing to stretch our legs and get a fire going for dinner, we headed back to camp and fished from the shore with the last remaining light. Here in the Boundary Waters, walleye fishing is the preferred method and fish, but I want to know why the eyelet at the end of my pole is so small that I can't get the bobber stop to go through it. So this is a walleye pole made for this, and let's see what happens when I cast it out there. Success. What'd you use? Bait. You know? Uh, bleach. With the first three days in the books, and Rob now knowing how to use his walleye pole, we're all looking forward to the second half of our trip. Coming up on part two of our trip, we play charades, hone in on our video skills, catch some keeper fish and release them, and we even make some new friends. Alright everyone, we're back with Rob, Ben, and a couple of our friends on day four of our canoe camping and fishing trip in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area. We're on Lake 3, about 20 miles east of Ely, Minnesota. We're happy to bring you part two now of our September 2021 fishing trip. As you've seen in part one, we spent three days out in the wilderness now attempting to fish for dinner as we avoided severe thunderstorms and day-long downpours. But on day four, we woke up to a beautiful, crisp fall sunrise. Before breakfast, we even hooked up on our first fish, 
hoping it was a good sign for the rest of the week. First walleye of the morning. What day is it? Oh jeez, walleye Wednesday. It's walleye Wednesday. With everything looking up, it was only time until Rob started reeling them in too. Put a fish on here. This is what we got. Do you want me to get the net? Nope, nope, I got him in. Oh, look at this. Ourselves a little bass. We'll get him back in the water. The first fish of the morning. Not true. Not true. What was the other first fish? Ah, uh, for me, first fish in the morning. Ben caught a while earlier. Let me make sure I clear that up. First fish today for me. A real whopper. Tell me what you're thinking of. Though we're living, we just can't get enough. Memories, we'll build them. I guess I already seen that part. Tell me what you're thinking of. Though we're living, we just can't get enough. Okay, Ben's hooked up. Sun has time to go. Yet they couldn't knew those fish are the story still oh, untold, nice. things left undone. It's never easy, and that's okay. These portage mules, they always go away. A simple sky and stillness, the million stars. Are you okay? I lost, my, I lost a finger. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> After a midday break, Rob and I went back out to try our hand at smallmouth fishing, but we still only caught northerns. He can he can fall. 
fall off of that all day. I don't have a leader on. Oh, you know? I can't get one on this lure. While we weren't fishing, Rob and I engaged in deep philosophical conversation. If these walleye aren't eating right now, what do you think they're doing? Partying. Because they know when it comes nighttime, it's their last, their last shindig. I'd be partying too. When we returned to camp, we found out not everyone was having the same luck with Northerns as we were. On his first fishing trip to the Boundary Waters, Dave decided to show off with some absolute stud smallies. Keep him bent. Keep him bent a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Stay first. Yeah, because he can't he has to get his... Although we explained to Dave on the van ride up how to fillet a smallmouth, I figured an actual demonstration was in order. With the dullest knife I've ever used, I showed Dave how to remove the fillets, cut out the bloodline, check to make sure all the bones had been removed, and cut the fish into the appropriate size for frying. It was a great end to Walleye Wednesday. Well, hold on, let me get Rob for the recap. So it's the end of Walleye Wednesday. And I've got great news to report. Walleye Wednesday has now officially become Smallmouth Wednesday. So, we had two smallmouth, one was 3.9 pounds, one was 4.5 pounds that were caught by a couple of the guys. Uh, ben and I caught some northerns, Ben caught a walleye this morning, and uh, oh, I did catch that bass you guys saw. It's a whopping 1.5 ounces. So, uh, anyway, just wanted to kind of give you the end of the day here in the tent uh, it's it's been a long day I guess but tomorrow we're gonna get up really early and try to go find some some more fish We're on to part three now here canoe camping on Lake Three in the Boundary Waters canoe area with our friends Brad, Brian, Dustin, and Dave. You've seen us paddle in from Access 30 and set up our campsite at the entrance to Lake Three. We've had a few days of pretty poor fishing weather, but once the rain stopped, we got to go fishing and have been doing pretty well, managing to catch some walleye, northerns, and a bunch of big smallmouths. We continue our trip now on day five and as Rob promised in the last segment, we're out fishing before sunup at a ledge right off our campsite, hoping to get an early bite. In past trips, Rob and I have had a lot of success at this ledge, and we wanted to fish it at the prime feeding times. Using moonlight and lighted floats, it seemed like the day was off to a promising start. Fish on. First fish of the day. It's a bluegill. After a few small fish to start the morning, Rob was able to bring in a walleye. Second fish of the day. He's a 
turn it up. Hey, good news. They're getting bigger. They are getting bigger. <laughs> and the right species. When it got warm enough to feel our fingers, we made some breakfast with Rob's signature mint chocolate chip pancakes. After that, the pairs of us got back in our canoes and headed out to some of the places around the lake chain that we scouted the previous days. Rob and I went back to the channel that connected lake two and three. We figured with some moving water between the lakes, along the ledges and humps underwater that we found on the fish finder, there would be some fish cruising the area. You want him in the net? He's probably too big for the net. Um. Yeah, you're... Inside, uh... Day five, Thursday, started out as walleye Thursday, and we decided to change up, not using live bait anymore, and it was then officially smallmouth Thursday. That wasn't working so well either, so it's now northern Thursday. That's doing pretty good. Yeah, doing pretty good, just using a uh, classic daredevil steel leader. Doing a little catch and release. We've both been hitting them now for about an hour. And uh, yeah, just catch and release. Just fun. Fun fighters. Yeah. But they're hitting pretty good. About the only thing in here that's biting. Another little northern, catch and release. We want to give some Portage Mule praise to these carbon fiber paddles. If you've never used them before, they're an absolute life changer. You can pick them up for starting at about 150 bucks. They make a world of difference. We found them late too. So, thank you. So, I'm just sitting back here at the campsite. Just got done going out fishing this morning. Caught a couple in Northern. One was, one was uh, large enough you could have, could have filleted it. But it's just not worth the hassle. 
So we let them both, both go. Just taking a break. I would say it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing to be out here. But one thing that I would want to point out to to people is to follow the rules. Um, you know, this is a privilege to be out here and enjoy this pristine country. And when you have people that come out and don't follow the rules or don't don't take care of it, you know, the Forest Service is going to shut it down or limit permits and make it more difficult to come out here. You know, we're out here on Lake 3, and it is the uh, 22nd or 23rd of September. And there are two available campsites, one on each side of us. And yet there's a group of people camping on an island that is not a campsite. And that's the kind of stuff that's going to get uh, get the Forest Service worked up. And that's the same thing, you know, when you're on a portage. And you're going from lake to lake. Um, you know, for, for us, we try to be very conscious of where we place our gear and place our canoes. Because other people are going to be coming through and we want to make sure we're not blocking them in or holding them up. You know, and the thing is too, if you're not too much out of gas, you know, help your fellow paddler going the other way you know carry a pack or carry some paddles or something for them so it maybe keeps them from having to make that extra trip it's just just the right thing but it's a pretty amazing place if you've never been you should definitely definitely check it out we go through uh, Canoe Country Outfitters in, in Ely. Uh, they've always been good to us. I've been coming up since I was a kid. And uh, I would recommend getting in touch with them. Well, I'll do a few things here at camp. Get organized. Get some lunch. And uh, head back out and try to catch some more fish. All right, we're back at it after a little midday break, dip in the lake. Yep. We're back out after Northerns. This seems to be the best bite today. I'm trying a couple of different spots, but I'm gonna head back to the first spot this morning. Jeez. Yeah. Northern. Just a little guy. Yep, this is a small guy. There's another one that swam right up to the boat with mine. Want your picture with him? No, he's he's too big. We need to give some Portage Mule praise to the seats we're using. We've rented the cloth stadium seats, I guess, in the past, and they didn't cut it. But these new seats with the aluminum frame are a must have. Not the most comfortable thing in the world, but after a full day of paddling, your back will thank you. Laid back. Just want to show you a 
an idea that I gotten from uh, a couple of the guys on YouTube from Upper Lip Outdoors. It's just a basketball net. Fill it with some rocks makes for a great anchor. Um, we also ran into a situation when we got here into the Boundary Waters, there were some pretty big rollers. And with the south wind coming in, it was, it was uh, taking our, our bait buckets and smashing them into the rocks. Uh, what we ended up doing was uh, modifying these in order to, to take the bait buckets and put them around there and then just throw a rock with them. Keeps that bait bucket down, keeps it from smashing into the rocks, and then also uh, kind of keeps, keeps the otters and other things from getting at them. We all come in a little before sundown to get a fire going for dinner. We wrap up a beautiful day catching a bunch of fish and taking full advantage of the great weather, hoping it held out for the rest of the week, which it didn't. Welcome you to Northern Friday, or Smallmouth Friday, or it's just Fish Friday. Fish Fry Day. Fish Fry Day. Eight o'clock in the morning, we're on a channel for Northerns. It's a little chilly, no bites yet, but trying for spoons in one of the places we had luck yesterday. Show them your spoon. How many northern hit it yesterday? My spoon has all but been destroyed. You can, uh, if anybody can tell that's supposed to be a perch, they're doing better than me. I can tell it's a perch. Yours is better in every way. After a little bit of fishing, the rain that's been with us all week was back again. With it just being a slight drizzle, we got our rain gear out and kept going knowing that the fish don't mind the rain since they're already wet. So this is why you don't buy cheap lures. Because apparently your hooks just break off. Or maybe this is just eco-fishing. I don't know. I'm just teasing the northern. How about that? Look at this thing. Oh! Oops. Oh, my thought. Oh! Oh! I have no treble hooks. None? Look. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you fish it like that? Just that time. It hit the it hit the rock. It hit the rock. What do you do? Well. Do you have a fish? Nope. Do you really? Oh. Ben's hooked up, oh yeah. Look at that little guy. See Rob, I told you, you have better luck with hooks on. You were lucky that that thing did not get off when you had your hand up there before you grabbed it, and those hooks went right into you. We would have to have surgery out here on the water. You want a picture with them? This may be the only fish you see all day. Uh, no, I got a good image in my head. Adios! 
Bienvenidos. Buenos días y bienvenidos a Boundary Waters. Soy Rob, es mi amigo Ben. Hola. Hoy no estamos pescando por mucho tiempo en la lluvia, pero es frío. El pes pescado es pequeño, no super grande. Y la clima es no bueno hoy. Entonces, ahora, hablando contigo más tarde, adiós. This Friday is not going so well yet. This Friday is turning into Hurricane Friday. We have our rain gear. We're going to head back to camp. People take vacations to Caribbean islands. I should be swimming with pigs right now. So, last day of the trip. It's Friday. We're hoping to be out there fishing right now, but as you can see in here, it is raining, it is cold. So we thought we'd take this time to uh, talk to some of the guys here about their experience so far on the trip. This is their first trip to the Boundary Waters. We'll start with uh, Dustin. How was the fishing? Fishing was good. Fishing was great. Uh, very much enjoyed it. Yesterday was a fantastic day. Uh, the day before was a good day. Um, first time at the Boundary Waters, definitely come back. It's very enjoyable, very relaxed. Um, good time to get away from the stresses of everyday life so as far as something I didn't enjoy I don't I don't think there was anything I didn't enjoy and you have caught the largest fish uh, which was a smallmouth bass mm -hmm. and uh, just short of a master angler 19 inches 19 inches and uh, weighed how much four and a half pounds four and a half pounds four and a half pounds it's a monster so Bunch of northern. Yep. yep. Good time. Excellent. And uh, we have Brian over here. Brian, tell us some of the things that you've enjoyed about being out here in the Boundary Waters. I've really enjoyed the pace out here. It's, it's definitely, like Dustin was saying, slow. You can get away. I mean, there was many times I lost track of what day it was. Um, which is interesting for me to lose track of time and days. And, but that was fun. It's, uh, it's cool to, you know, like we were talking, you, you kind of work for everything. You work for your lunch, your breakfast, your dinner. Your, you know, there's, there's always something to do out here, whether it's gathering wood, cleaning up from the day before. Uh, I enjoy that. I really thought, though, this is one of the things that I, I thought we were going to be fishing and catching fish a lot of fish like in my head it was <laughs> we're gonna catch canoes full of fish uh, that hasn't happened here but uh that was my hopes and dreams but we did catch a lot of fish caught a northern for the first time uh that was fantastic so it's been really good very peaceful very enjoyable excited to come back again and then we've got Dave over here. Dave, what did you like the most about being out here? You know, it's been about three decades since I've been out fishing on a trip like this. So uh, you, you forget the, the life of the uh, out in the wilderness and, and things of that nature. And you go out there in the canoe and actually caught a fish and the thrill of reeling it in and bringing it in and, and uh, the experience was unforgettable it was a good time got to eat the rewards and enjoy the the flavor of the, the fish out in the lake out here and 
have a good time doing it. So we are getting rained out, a little bit of rain, that type of a thing, but we got to experience a lot of different things on this trip. So it was a good time. I think you are a master angler, though. You got the most, I think. I don't know about the most, but it was it was a good time. I lucked out and just got to hold some Brian, or actually, yeah, it was your pole, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> I got to hold. Yes. <laughs> Got to hold someone's pole just because they were taking a break and actually caught a walleye on that one. So that was a good experience. And how did that walleye taste? Well, <laughs> the one that got away. So the, the fish are slippery, so we didn't stake it to the ground before we started flying it up. And one tail spin and it was gone. But uh, the smallmouth bass were really good. Yeah. And you, you caught also a whopper. Yeah. Um, we didn't get a measurement on length. But we did get a weight, and it was at uh, was it three point nine pounds. pounds. So another uh, and you know the log. inexperience of myself, I'm pulling in this fish, having no idea that that's a big fish. I just pulled it in, put it in the boat, and until Dustin said that that's a monster fish, I would have had no idea. I just had a good time pulling it in. So it was a good time. Yeah, but the pikes are definitely out here, and we're biting good, but uh, didn't get anything that was round enough to, to keep so we got to experience some of that too they're they're quite the fish to get a hold of so yeah that's uh week one just about in the books uh supposed to have this this rain stop here in the next couple of hours hopefully um and once we do, then we're going to start looking at getting back out there to fish a little bit before we start packing things up so that we can leave tomorrow morning uh, around 8 o'clock. So hopefully uh, hopefully the last few hours of our trip uh, are fruitful because we'd sure love to have one more night of fish dinner. But if not, we've got plenty of macaroni and cheese. So we'll see you around the fire. The rain finally let up in the afternoon, and we got back in the canoes hoping to catch some fish for our last dinner in the Boundary Waters. Okay guys, we're going to go right in between Dustin and Dave while they're fishing. Lots of fish in there, guys. How you guys doing, Ah! <laughs> yeah, wait till I Sorry, this is our spot. <laughs> I hear they bite good here. You might want to try somewhere else, though. This is our spot. Yeah. We'll be on the lake. Hee <laughs> nice try! Uh, uh, uh. Try to catch him? <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright, this place sucks. Let's get out of here. One of the best ways to find good fishing spots on the lake is to go where other people are fishing and take it from them. One of the best ways to find good fishing spots on the lake is to go to where other people are and take it from them. Are you making a video up there? Yeah. I'm making a video back here. I started mine first. Yeah, but I don't know that that counts. Um, it does, yeah. Those are the rules. Well, I said mine faster. One of the best ways to find fish. No, one of the best ways to find fish. I don't know if people didn't take it from them. You take it. You take it. I See? finished. I was done way before you. Okay, that's a wrap. It should go without saying but we do not endorse stealing other people's spots. At least not while they're at them. Scare you? Yeah, that's, and that's you know, pissing me off because my, my uh, thing was all jacked up. Welcome to the fishing hour here at Portage Mule. Right now we're hooked up to a small northern. We are going to 
going to retrieve our lure and set him free. All right. Oh, uh oh, we're having problems already. Well, will we un cut the commercial? We'd like to take a five second short commercial break. <laughs> Hi, thanks. We're back here at Portage Mule Fishing. So, as you heard previously, we're hooked up to a northern. We're going to get him brought up here so that we can get him off the hook and get him back into the water just as quick as possible. He's a doozy. Gently. Where is that hook? Just like that. That was tougher than it should have been. But, quality release. What'd you catch the bass on? Whopper plopper. Whopper plopper. Woo! Oh. I caught the world's largest bass. <laughs> Seven and a half pounds? No, about three inches. <laughs> We're back. Go show that to Dustin. Make oh. him weigh that the devil. How long is it? Oh my goodness. Oh, about three lengths. Oh, All right, here? good. <laughs> this one is four two three. Four two three. Is that the big one? Uh, yes, yes. Four twenty three. Yep. Yeah. How hard was he to pull in? They're fun to they're fun to reel in, aren't they? They jump a long way. Oh, yes, they do. They jump so high. His head was down. He was reeling, and the reel was smoking. <laughs> 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 Felt good though, didn't it? And he was grinning the whole time. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. This you is, get a picture of it. How do you feel about, yeah. do you feel about that, Brian? Hold it up. Are you, are so you who caught man? the who caught the big one? He, he caught them both. I cut the northern, and, and literally I cut the northern. He was this big. <sighs> this one, 
This board is only like 48 rods. It's not even very long. I would like to say thanks to Upper Lip Outdoors, Mark Starkson and Ryan Phelps. Don't know if you guys will ever see this, but I really appreciate what you guys did and to do on your channel. Hope some others uh, go check you out. You gave us uh, some good ideas. Once again, the IKEA bags and the anchors. Greatly appreciated. Maybe one day we'll run into you up here. Oh, I see the lake. I see the next lake. It's always a good feeling. Now, the question is going to be getting this 20 foot canoe off of me with this pack. Nobody here. And about 10 mile an hour wind. I'll tell you what, it's been a lot of fun being out here making these videos. This is officially our second one, but we're going to call it episode one, I think. And hopefully we'll get better, a little more entertaining, have some better info for you. We'd sure like you to subscribe and check us out again. Well, that's it for this trip, everyone. We're glad to have you follow along and hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get alerts on our upcoming videos. And also check out PortageMule.com for future updates and some really one-of-a-kind merchandise. got to have pancakes, eggs, bacon, uh, toast for breakfast. It was pretty amazing. So the four guys that are with us, uh, who you're going to hear meet shortly. No. Or maybe you've already met them. <laughs> so here we go. I'm taking it from the top. Right now I'm just trying to get this thing organized so that I can not look like such a fool. And this one we're real proud of. And this one's kind of cool. And this one we're real proud of. And this one's real cool. This one's real cool. This one's pretty neat. We used our anchor. So today I wanted to go over the Thra Thrasher Garmin Striker. My name is Hugo Montoya. I got nothing. Is it on? I, I can't tell. Water meal pro tip. Another water meal pro tip. Get yourself a pair of 15 inch loppers. So another proto pro tip for a, from Portage Mule. There's a culprit. Yeah. Animal crackers in my soup line. Dave, do you like it more when it's sunny or cold and rainy? Sunny, calm. I 
should have let Ben take this thing. But it is raining again. We had to put on our rain gear. Because it's raining again. If you can believe it, it's because it's raining again. I'm glad Ben pointed that out. I wanted to talk to you about something that's very important. It's permits. When you want to go to the Boundary Waters, get out of my face, fly. You want to go to the Boundary Waters? What do you want to do? Are you ready? Are we about to go live? Cut. Oh. Action. So, <laughs> I love you, Rob. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't have the trailer ready for me. You don't have. <laughs> yeah. Kickback. So, if you want to get a permit to this joint, you go to the website and you order it. Do you know which way to the gym? Maybe that way. Oh my. GoPro, shut down. GoPro, stop recording.